The British royal family, a symbol of honor and wealth, pride and status for the British people. A revered institution that is strong, stable, and represents the virtues of reliability, fair play, and the highest standards. But is that the whole story? I don't think so. The British royal family are a mask of respectability, which disguises a nation stifled by the entrenched land ownership of its aristocracy and addicted to easy money, flowing from a square mile of land known as the City of London. This addiction is killing the golden goose of its true wealth, which is the energy, talent, and innovation of the commoners. The British are known for more than just their royal family. So if you think every tourist at Heathrow came to see the Queen, you're probably mistaken. They're just as likely to have come because of Shakespeare, J.K. Rowling, The Beatles, The Stones, William Blake, The Bronte Sisters, Isaac Newton, Stephen Hawking, The Sex Pistols, Depeche Mode, Wordsworth, Adele, Laurence Olivier, John Collins, Elton John, The Clash, The Cure, Adam Ant, Alan Turing, David Bowie, Elizabeth Taylor, Charles Dickens, David Beckham, Boy George, J.H. Lawrence, Robbie Williams, Charles Darwin, Michael Faraday, J.R. Tolkien, and the list goes on and on and on. Furthermore, Britain has a global reputation for its cutting-edge fashion and music. The sounds of the streets of Liverpool, Manchester, and London can be heard all over the world. But all this may be facing extinction as Britain retreats further into a financial monoculture imposing a harsh austerity upon its citizens and abandoning their reputation as global creative leaders. How did this happen, you ask? Well, let me tell you. When thinking of an economy, I like to imagine an electronic circuit board. Money is just a symbol for energy. This energy flows through a circuit like a current, and we call it currency. This energy can be static, as in goods, tangibles, property, and other assets. Or it could be a dynamic energy, like services or labor. According to Albert Einstein, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. If you look around you, energy is everywhere. All the things that make up an economy already exist in one form or another. So when politicians tell us that there is no money, they're either lying or stupid. Because money is simply a symbol for energy. And we're surrounded by energy. So when they say we have to impose austerity, they're either lying or stupid. Because all the energy we need already exists. It's not missing. It's just flowing badly through the circuit. The economy works well when energy is flowing smoothly and is directed at those components that harness more energy. But the machine of the UK economy is not running smoothly. Much of the energy is accumulating in the batteries, just sitting there, doing nothing. This is a static type of energy known as property. Yeah. We can see this in the entrenched land wealth of just 0.3% of the UK population who own two-thirds of the country. Huh? This tiny group of people are the descendants of William the Conqueror's buddies. What? They're the soldiers that fought alongside Willie at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Although 70% of the population has a stake in land and collectively owns most of the 5% of the UK that's urban, this is just a mere 3 million acres out of 60 million acres. What makes things even more unfair is not only do those aristocratic owners of rural land get away with not paying taxes on much of that property, but the government actually subsidizes them. What? Pretty crap for the serfs. I, I mean, UK taxpayers, huh? And as if that weren't enough. Not only does the remaining population have to fight with each other tooth and claw over the remaining scraps of land, but they have to compete with rich oligarchs from all over the world, too. Not only does the government allow the global super rich to buy property in the UK, but they help them get cheap loans, too. What? If you're a foreign national living in the UK and you can afford 30 grand a year, 
you get special tax advantages over the natives. You don't have to pay taxes on offshore income unless you bring it into the UK. But you don't really have to bring it into the UK because your offshore company can pay for your house, your car, and lots of other stuff. But if you're a bog-standard British person, you pay taxes on everything. Mm. This makes UK property look extremely attractive. Low tax for the non-domiciles! Step right this way! So they rent their property out to the natives at ridiculously high prices. And everyone has a big laugh about it. Well, except for the natives, who aren't laughing at all. When Gerald Grosvenor, the sixth Duke of Westminster, was asked for advice on how young entrepreneurs could succeed, he said, Ew, make sure they have an ancestor who is a very close friend of William the Conqueror. Ha 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 ha. The little people live squished together in small villages, towns, and crowded cities. Pretty outrageous, huh? In a 2006 study by academics at University College London, it was discovered that the class system is still live and well today. The overwhelming factor in determining how well children do in life, it's not what schools they attend or how clever they are or even how hard they work. The number one factor in predicting future success is class. So it's not what you do or what you know. It's where you were born and who you were born to. This concludes part one of England's Mask. Come back next week for part two. Please like this video, tell all your mates, and subscribe to the channel.